One thing we know for sure about Tulsi Gabbard is she's an expert on regime change wars. And I've kind of connected some dots here. I don't know if I'm the first person to say this. I think I heard a commentator, might have been Ron Paul, which would be thrilling if it was Ron Paul, because if I'm in the same boat as Dr. Paul, then uh, I'm one smart dude. Well, or I'm probably really lucky. Uh, this article from 2019, no wonder Democratic Party bosses and mainstream media are trying to bury presidential contender Tulsi Gabbard. She is the only candidate, perhaps the only politician in the United States, who is telling the American public exactly what they need to know about what their government and military are really up to. Fighting illegal regime change wars and to boot, sponsoring terrorists for that purpose okay so last summer right we had a lot of activity here in the united states and i'm not sure how that all went down but i read article after article that these people were being paid to do what they were doing now the interesting word here is sponsoring and this is an easy jump to where I'm going to go. Tulsi Gabbard has recognized at this point that we are now in yet another regime change war. Now, hold on a minute, right? We've already changed regime. Well, the whole thing led up to that moment, and now we're under the new regime. Now, again, this makes complete sense because of uh, the doubts that were cast upon how, let me say this delicately, how the new president was installed. And install is the correct word, people. Joe Biden is just a mere shadow of his former self. And you have to go back a few years, but even if you listen to a speech that he did, say, 10 years ago, you'll hear some connectivity, you know, like the Ethernet plug is in and you're getting some type of transmission. Now it's mumbling. It's, I don't know where to put the pen. Um, I don't know how to salute the Marine. It's, it's real bad. It's really, really bad. So yes, were they successful in conducting? See, if they can do it in other countries, this is the point I'm making here. Um, they can certainly do it here. And they use the same kind of um, propaganda. They tell the population, your leader is a dictator, and we are coming to save you from the dictator. And we are going to install somebody who is favorable to our ideas and policies, who will treat you better, who will be more responsive. And the big word they like to use when referring to the last president is empathetic. Joe Biden is empathetic. Well, Tulsi Gabbard uh, decided to really go in hard on both Schiff and Brennan, saying this is a dangerous domestic terror push. These guys are regime change war specialists. In other words, this is what they do, especially Brennan. Um, this is what our bureaucratic deep state class does for a living each and every day. They look at new things to topple, and they've decided to set their sights on what they call domestic terrorists. This should make you absolutely terrified. This is why the Libertarian Party, I think, has been right for a long time. The non-aggression principle, things that Dr. Paul talks about all the time, these are things now that aren't at all even considered in the deepest caverns and caves of our governments. Just insane. Insurgency movement. You mean people that don't agree with the government. Nobody ever refers to the 1960s as an insurgency movement. People during that time period thought that um, taking healthy people and putting them on the front line of a shooting war that had no purpose at all and ended up being one of the worst catastrophes in our 
history as far as foreign policy goes. Those people were protesting. They had every right to protest peacefully. Some a little bit more aggressively. And certainly once it gets to the point where people are shooting at one another, that's no longer a peaceful protest. This is the, the uh, sentence here that got Tulsi Gabbard very fired up. And the rest of the human race who are at least paying attention and who aren't being fed and taken care of by the deep state, which, by the way, is a tactic. All of it is a tactic. Let's take care of the citizens so they won't think for themselves. You know, it, it's one of those things where I'll wash your hand and you wash mine, or whatever the expression is. Uh, so the, the insurgency movement is comprised of an unholy alliance frequently, frequently of, and here's where we get into deep, um, sort of deep ops here, religious extremists. So the people that go to church are now going to be thought of as extremists. You really go to church? Because I heard a lot of those people are part of this insurgency movement. Are you one of them? Then, of course, this blanket term, authoritarians, like, okay, like you're not the authoritarian telling me that I need to look out for them? A lot of this is opposite day behavior or, or projectionism or whatever it's called. Then you've got fascists. Okay, again, bigots. Um, anybody that doesn't do the whole... Um, Reverse racism stuff is a bigot. That's basically what they're saying. Or if you're neutral and you're not totally on board with the propaganda they're feeding you daily. And then you've got flat out racists. Okay. Uh, but this is the alliance. And then you've got nativists. And then the jackpot line, which of course had myself and my uh, good friend uh, Reed Coverdale up in arms a bit. Libertarians and Tulsi Gabbard made a point point of saying libertarians a couple of times when she was on with Brian Kilmeade and Tucker Carlson and um, she was on with Laura Ingram and Mike Huckabee. By the way, she's getting a lot of sympathy from people on the right. She gets no sympathy from people on the left. They had this bill called a Confronting Threats of Domestic Terrorism Act. In other words. Those people who are in rural America, who own guns, those are bad people. And we have to enact this bill. Anyway, Schiff put this bill out like two years ago. And the Biden administration, not listening to Tulsi Gabbard, is now mulling it over. Should we pursue this bill? This is the worst thing. Uh, I think at one point she said this was like lighting a match and throwing it into you know, a barrel of gasoline or something to that effect. So Tulsi Gabbard back in 2019, obviously, was talking about regime change wars. And guess what? She's still talking about regime change wars. She hasn't said it in the way that I just did. But let's be honest, the regime change war has come home to America. It's got all of the parallels. Again, you gaslight the population. You, you make them think evil of all of these groups. Say you're going to take over Venezuela, right? What they did prior to this election was say, okay, this guy in charge now is a fascist. He's a dictator. We're going to put in Mr. Empathetic, who can barely, you know, walk and chew gum. Actually, he can probably just walk. He can't chew gum. But his cognitive skills from people who are in the medical field, they think he's around 50%. That's what I've heard, about 50. All right, and you could get a 16-year-old high school kid who's got way more upstairs and who could probably run the country as opposed to this guy, although maybe not. They'd probably be playing Fortnite all day, so they wouldn't, they wouldn't be able to run the country. Um... But my main point here is Americans need to understand that this is what our government does. They've just taken the battle home. You know, they're still going to do their overseas uh, contingency operations, 
They're ramping up activities in Syria. Of course, um, Iraq again, which is insane. Um, all over the Middle East, you know, we're, we're sending troops and ships out there. And anybody involved in our armed forces, it just kind of stinks that you have this government which just tries to make money off of y'all and, um, you know, boost military contractors and line the pockets of the very wealthy on the backs of those that do all the heavy lifting and provide cover for these people. It just, you know, our troops are great, but the people who put them in harm's way are not. And they shouldn't be putting them into harm's way unless it's absolutely necessary. And that's not how we've operated. And now, to prove my point, Washington, D.C. right now is a war zone, all right? It's, it's a militarized zone, and nobody seems to really care. There are few people that are calling this out. Is this the way we want to live? Imagine if Trump did this. Just, I mean, they'd be calling for him to be, you know, literally taken out. They'd be saying, we need to take him out now. This is bad stuff. But these people can do it under the, you know, the auspices of, hey, we're protecting the country from supposed domestic terrorists who could strike at every moment. One last analogy. During that whole we need the Patriot Act era, we had the color code system. It was red alert, yellow alert, orange alert. If you see something, say something. They try to engage the American population in a way where we're, we're just all fearful. We're looking over our shoulder. We're worried. You know, should I go to work today? They said it was red alert. What's going to happen to me? This is what they're doing. They're, they're constantly doing this. They did this last year, too, obviously, with COVID-19. And that was a dress rehearsal for other things that they're going to roll out. I'm not saying covid is a walk in the park, but I'm saying that it was approached in a way that made everybody afraid to go to the hospital for other things. It made people who are just phobic about, you know, breathing want to just stay away from it all. And we don't know how many hundreds of thousands of people have kind of gone into the shadows a bit or have decided to be even more rec reclusive than the social distancing requirements. All of it is a giant psyop, and people have bought it. And so this probably will be an easier sell unless people stand up and call it out. And that's what makes Tulsi Gabbard a very rare politician. She is the regime change war expert, and uh, she calls it like she sees it. And right now she's done the pivot, finally criticizing Biden, which... Um, the only thing I can say about that is Tulsi, what took you so long? I know she's trying to practice aloha, but um, I don't want to say there's no time for aloha anymore, but there can be some aloha, but there's got to be some, you know, kicking butt and taking names and going on these shows and telling it like it is and go on as many shows as you can, Tulsi. Uh, you know, you're not restrained by being in Congress anymore. They can't hurt you in Congress. You can just continue to speak out as a private citizen, and hopefully you're going to switch party affiliations at some point. I'm hoping for libertarian or independent, but I won't hold my breath, but I can hope, right? Again, this here, this is like a Patriot Act, part two, but worse. And we haven't repealed the Patriot Act, and they're going to use the Patriot Act on actual patriots so maybe the name is appropriate now that's what's really really stunning